Hi, Mermaid Junkies. You are watching Mermaid Junkie TV, a Mermaid Junkies blueprint for how to create a life you love. I am Raquel English, the founder of The English Settlement. Um, I wanted to share my story. If you've been to my channel any number of times, you might know or hear me talk about Mermaid Junkie School, but I also founded a nonprofit organization, which is called The English Settlement, which basically for IRS reasons and things of that nature, so that it could spread out, you know, universally through the English settlement will have other uh, workshops and retreats and things like that but won't be necessarily focused around mermaid you know the mermaid methodol methodology that I teach for mermaid junkie school there's other there will be other things as well but I wanted to tell my story a little bit because some people ask like from other videos or if we're doing um, the English mannerisms, people have asked like, but they don't really understand what my channel is all about. So I thought I would give you a little bit of a description. So um, bear with me if you've already been to my channel and you've already, you already know this story or if you're, you know, a member of my family, you probably know that too already. So, <clears throat> um, but my story is, is that I founded the English settlement because I had my life's purpose planned very early. Not planned necessarily, but I knew what my life's purpose was. And I also knew what, um, you know, what my passion was in life. What every 19 year old would do at a time like that when I received that inspiration, and that's what I like to call it, inspiration, that it kind of freaked me out because if, I don't know, it, the reason it freaked me out is because if you've ever had that experience where you know that there's something that you're supposed to do and that you were meant to do, but it seems like a massive undertaking to do and like a huge responsibility that it's almost kind of like burdensome in a way. So I did what every 19 year old does at that time when you get this kind of inspiration is that I just shut those feelings down because I, I had not even had one child yet. So I was like, no way. And plus the way that the vision was for me and the way that I knew what I was supposed to do was was more prefaced in a, a way of me being a teacher. And I was like, I don't want to be a teacher because I mean, at that time being 19, I was thinking, oh, I'm supposed to go to school and, you know, get a job as a school teacher and, and that kind of thing. And I was just like, ugh, it sounds terrible. I know that's horrible, you guys, but I just am really not, like I love and I am always drawn to learning and and you know, and that kind of thing. But I gotta tell you, I mean, to sit in a classroom, I don't know if it's because I'm ADD or what it is, but I'm very artistic. So I have to be moving around. I like to use my hands a lot when I'm creating and, and things like that. And you know, in classrooms, most of the time, it's not a hands-on thing unless you're taking like an art class or something. Anyway, so mind you, I shut those feelings down and just continued. Um, I got married, I... Um, it had children, I had four kids, and continued just to raise my kids and stuff. And I would do little things here and there, um, but I always really knew in the back of my mind what I was supposed to do, but in a really super dysfunctional household. And so my dad was, you know, he was a, a Viet, uh, Vietnam War veteran, and he was sent home because of injuries, um, addiction of alcohol, and mm, my whole family. I'm sure that that was very prominent back then. But anyway, it's it's very prominent here too. I don't know. That kind of sounds weird, but you know what I'm saying? Like anyway, so my dad, I think that was the way that was his coping mechanism for how he was going to try to erase things that he had such trauma happen to him. Per, you know, first of all, that when he was a kid um, and then after, you know, growing up and then and then going into the war. And so I'm sure that wasn't easy for like an 18 year old boy. And so anyway, it's extreme dysfunction in my home. Um, and in regards to that, that causes a kid to, you know, have a lot of issues. And I think that's why I learned so much or always wanted to, you know, go swim and, and read stories. And I would disappear and go into like this fairy tale drawn life because it helped me to cope. And, you know, you find ways to cope. And however that is, um, that continues to grow and to manifest itself into something that you use that either you can use it as a disability or you can try to reverse, you know, reverse your future and create, you know, wonderful, 
you know, dreamy like state of existence. And that's basically what I did. So, um, I really felt really alone a lot when I was a little girl and really insignificant. And so that is one of the reasons too that I started the English Settlement is because I didn't want people to ever have to feel like I did when I was a little girl like that. It's very disheartening. It's very sad and it's very lonely. And um, I just, I, want, I, I wanted to create something to where little girls could still dream and and even women, because I think that we all, you know, when you're when you're a mom and you're going through teaching and raising kids and you're at a young age like I was. I mean, I started having kids when I was 20. So, and my last child I had before, I think I, was, I, think I was 26. Because, I mean, I was like popping babies out <laughs> and right. Anyway, I just always wanted to have my kids young so that I wouldn't be, you know, up in age when I had grandbabies, hopefully. So, so I started, you know, my blog and stuff, but I really had no super direction because I think it was until 2009, then the waves started crashing down on me. And that's when I had like this transformation of just, you know, numerous things that happened in my life. And it really caused me to like reflect and do some internal, you know, dialogue with within myself and I'm like, I've got to, this is what I'm supposed to do. And I think until you get on that path and you know exactly and you're following that dream and following that passion and following that life's purpose that you really are going like in all different directions. I mean, like for my blog and for YouTube and, um, you know, all that kind of thing, you just, if you don't have a direction, you're just all over the place. Plus it doesn't help it that I'm ADD too. So, I mean, I was going down rabbit hole after rabbit hole, but so anyway, I think that in September, October, that's kind of when I knew exactly what I was supposed to be doing. And that's when I started my YouTube channel. So that is my story. Um, I worked as a mermaid when I was I think 17, I got my first job as a professional mermaid at a place called Wikiwatchy Springs in Florida. And I worked there for years and performed in, you know, um, live shows. And I'll leave the link below too if you've never heard of, um, it's kind of like this side road. It was before like Disney ever was about, you know, it opened up in like the mid 1940s. And it used to be like this really cool, I mean, it is still a cool place. I mean, there's no other place like it in the world. It's right at the mouth of a river and girls put on tails and they swim and perform in these um, underwater synchronized swimming stories underwater. And that's what I did. And so anyway, once a mermaid, always a mermaid. And I just have always loved being, you know, a mermaid and I've loved swimming since I was really little. That was one of my escapes as well as my mom would take us swimming all the time. I was always, always, always in the water, probably because I hope this kind of clarify a little bit as to what my foundation is about and what Mermaid Junkie School is about. I'll go more in depth in, in this helped clarify a little bit what my channel is about, or maybe it didn't. Maybe it wasn't about my channel, maybe it was more, more about my story. I don't know. And it looks like it's really super bright in here. Like it really is bright in here. Love it if you would subscribe to my channel. And I would also love it if you would swim over to my blog and sign up for my newsletter, um, Mermaid Junkie Tail Mail Love Letters to you. And that will come out pretty much unless there's something that I'm, um, marketing or something like that, which isn't very often. The subscription, like you would get my newsletters and stuff about little things that not everybody knows about. So that is the benefit of that. So I hope that you will do that. I am so grateful that you spent the moment to come over, swim in over and visit with me. And I will talk to you soon. As always, I'm yours into my next swim. Don't forget to subscribe. Ciao.